Ah, uh, who cares what I look like? Mad, mad professor here. <clears throat> so this is going to be called The Big Picture, okay? So I have wanted to um, kind of do a comprehensive um, video about uh, everything, <laughs> obviously. Um, that that could take a while so uh, we'll see how it goes right <clears throat> I'm going to do past, pe past, present and future and I'm talking about us, the universe, God um, but specifically about us children of God not these physical beings we're in, that's just part of our journey. <clears throat> you are, and I am, about four billion years old. Okay, so, um, yeah, but before I go into past, present and future, I'd like to dispel a myth. and it's located in the past. The myth being that an advanced race of humanoids or something were on the earth and uh, doing stuff with us and we've got all these stories about you know fallen angels and all the bits like that <clears throat> um, and the 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 most the best thing to dispel that this could have occurred is that an advanced race wouldn't have such problems as recorded in the Sumerian tablets and things like that, <clears throat> and the bits in the Bible and the Book of Enoch. Uh, so I'm going to mention sorry <laughs> because so the, the, the best thing to disprove that is that an advanced race yeah wouldn't have such problems with um, you know what's recorded and you know, them wanting to kill each other and, um, you know, incest and, um, yeah, sort of issues like that. Um, an advanced race came to have the technology that is apparent to build pyramid, etc. Just, why would they have those problems? If they were advanced, surely they would have overcome those sort of problems. And to say that an advanced race could get so advanced and then just um, go completely tits up, again, is, is a bigger stretch of the imagination to me. And it's not just about imagination, it's about logic, it's about seeing why the universe you know, what's its purpose, what's our purpose within it. But there obviously were something here. And I've, uh, a video I did a while back, how I do the event, I went into a meditation and just spoke and something new came up in that. And I sort of saw a, basically a past life of mine. Um, I said I, I seem to be quite hairy, I lived in this, well I didn't live in it, but I was in this sort of little round house, you know, not very big at all, you could almost reach out and, and touch it and there was a, the doorway was like a window, That's that was the door, the window was the door. Anyway, so since then I've been touching on that now and then and 
um, every now and then when I'm feeling it right, I, I've been able to get a little bit more information about that sort of memory. And there's definitely a presence there. There's a presence of God, basically. Um, so this is, you know, this is what I'm trying to explain. I have, I have sort of said, I'm not going to keep saying, oh, I've said this before, I've said this before. This, this video is trying to give the big picture. So uh, a lot I may have said before. Um, so the presence, and I've been able to tap into it, the presence feels just like God. Um, some of you may think, how, how does he know, right? I know, okay? I absolutely know. Um, so, in a sense, for me, that's proof that, that yes, God had a presence on the earth. Um, probably, because it, it, it does sound like it would have been about 200 people that with with writings and things like that that seems to fit um, and you know what they were was God had made these beings and they may be similar to humans they may have a few extra uh, probably a bit you know beyond us and so God's had a presence on the earth when we were and it I don't know if when we were mammals and lions and things like that, when we were living lives like that. Um, but when we were like, you know, a bit beyond apes, getting close to sort of being humans. And I think, you know, God, it will come clear one day, but um, God wanted to have an eye on us, a cl you know, a closer eye. God can feel our emotions and everything, but... For some reason, God had a presence here. Built the pyramids. There's an enigma we cannot deny. Um, the stuff in South America too. There's a presence we cannot deny. Advanced technology. But it wasn't an alien race. From planet Nibiru or some other planet. Because it just can't have been. I may come back to that in a bit. So let's, um, another thing, you know, I'm saying we're four billion years old, so the first lives we would have had would have been as little single cell organisms, um, you know, and our souls were just, just felt born, so we were just experiencing, you know, something. I mean, I don't have any memories from it, and probably never will, because I don't know. But, so we went up, getting more and more complicated animals. And in the, for the first few billion years, we would have been in the water, we would have been underwater all that time. We, did, we didn't even probably break the surface. Um, so it wasn't until about 300 million years ago that the, the Earth started expanding to the point where some peaks were breaking the surface and we stuck that's when we were getting some dry land and then we were coming out and living as creatures on the dry land and if you look at animals today they are they all have a pretty a pretty sort of standard personality they're all good right I mean, you could have an evil animal, but it would probably take a human to make it evil, right? So all the animals are good. They absolutely know what they're doing. Um, and they all have this shared personality. And as I've said before, this all animals that are on the earth now are God. Now, I mean, if they have the life force of God in them, and I think... God's done this because when we're going to find out that we've been all the animals that there are on the earth, um, and now and then we see that God has been all these animals, 
you know, you might think, oh, it's cruel, you know, God made us be a penguin and stand on the Antarctic for three months in the bloody cold. But God's doing that now. So it's not like God's not prepared to be these animals that we've all been. Um, God, sorry. Uh, so when we were these animals, we would have been more different. Like, you know, say a, a pack of lions or whatever. You know, because then each life force inside each animal was uh, a child of God, so separate, unique, there would have been much more different. There would have been many more mistakes made and, you know, and, and quarrelling. And, I mean, they do quarrel now, but, you know, it's... Uh, pecking order, you know, it's, it's the way those animals are. And for anyone who says that, oh, well, you know, why aren't the animal, you know, now still children of God and stuff like that? Um, two things. Firstly, we'd see a lot more difference in animals. They would behave so much more differently, you know. They wouldn't be so sort of uh, sorted yeah and uh second reason why that is not the case um is uh how cruel would that be um if you look at the way we've treated animals right um you know a a, a god who'd put his children in 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 these beings to experience a life and then have to have the cruelty from humans and the destruction of their natural habitat um, or, or domesticating the animals, you know, chickens have their wings clipped, horses are broken in, uh, etc. That would be too cruel. So, yeah, so God is, is taking that all on. Um, you know. <clears throat> so, looking at the genetics, I saw I saw something uh, where we all stem from one mother. I saw a, a picture diagram of the genetics, and so the, the common mother we have seems to be twenty thousand years ago. And uh, a lot of people still have that genetic thing. And then there's been, there's been about uh, three or four different branches that have kind of adapted and come off that. And there was one about 13,000 years ago and one about 16,000 years ago. And there was one 8,000 years ago. And that... I can't remember now which one was which, but it, it, so in this time, so that from twenty thousand years ago to eight thousand years ago, I think you know God was really having to sort of focus on what was, you know, how these human bodies were 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 coping with the with the job of you know, what God's ultimate plan is to bring us all into awareness of what we truly are. And and God's got his her plan for that. Um so I think then, you know, the God the beings that God had down here may well have been active in uh doing some of the genetics, perhaps. I mean, I guess God... Had... I think all the creatures that we've had on the Earth have almost been created by us, children of God. We've, in a sense, designed them. But God obviously had a part to play as well. Um, I guess I 
that needs more thinking about. <clears throat> right, so so I'll just summarize now this the the past element of this talk. We're very old. Our souls, that is, our all feeling soul, which is a, a universe, half a universe. The male half of the universe and the female half of the universe. That is a soul. Yet when we're incarnate on the earth, it's the male gets one body and the female gets one body. And we're all mixing about. And we've had all these lives and we undoubtedly had many lives with our own soulmate. Um, so there would have been mostly happy times and you know we we would have been in in our ignorance we didn't know we were uh, eternal souls when we were running about as an otter or something or a lion there would have been much more about you know just uh, the life would have been like a whirlwind as many people's lives are today and uh, living in a whirlwind you know just and um, as kind of we are as children. So, um, and then we're getting closer to the point where we're, we're in beings that we can use our hands, we can communicate. You know, it's all becoming more and more, well, more and more complicated. And more and more sort of closer to what, the soul is capable of, but it's a, a big, big learning process. How's this? Is this fun? <laughs> it's not supposed to be fun, man. I'm just trying to get down, get down what I'm saying. Right. <clears throat> Present. Am we ready for the present yet? Oh, I tell you what, a little bit more about this. So God's yeah, because what's happened to them now, right? Where are they? So God had two hundred beings that call them God's helpers. They've got the life force of God in them, right? So whereas we're all unique, I've got the life force of me and me. You've got the life force of you and you. You and me, we are different children of God. Um, yeah, we all have the one love in us, so does God, right? But So we are all one in a way, but we're not. And uh, anyway, I, I don't want to sidetrack too much. So God's got 200 beings, they're advanced, they know everything, they, they've got God's knowledge, right? And they, they know everything God knows, uh, they know they know they've got the life force of God in them. And um, they're doing things like making the pyramid, Tiwanaku. They're looking at us. So in that memory I had from a past life, I'm some sort of ape being, but, you know, I, remember I was scratching my finger in the dirt. I was... The memory of, like... Friends I knew, or brothers, or whatever, were, were off for the day. The usual sort of walking off over there, and I was sort of <coughs> thinking, you know, I obviously didn't fancy going, and I was a bit bored. And I was sort of scratching my finger in the dirt, and I, and I think, you know, I might have then begun writing or something. I don't, know. I don't even know if I could talk. But I sensed this presence, so friends go off that way, I'm in my house here, and over there, about sort of a couple of hundred metres away, is some trees, and then there's this dome. I can't see a dome, but I can... It's almost like a, um, a force field dome. And I can... And I'm a little, and and I'm a little bit um, 
sceptical. I'm almost a bit, you know, uh, <clears throat> questioning this presence. But I can, I can feel it. it. It's got a palpable feeling um, which corresponds with the feeling of our mother and father. Particularly more the father, but um, anyway. So they were here for a reason, keeping an eye on us, tweaking things here and there, just you know, make sure the plan goes. <clears throat> and then they go. And I think they probably go um, when children of God want them to go. And this is probably the time where, you know, a few generations after the... This, this new gene that is 8,000 years old, this is, I think this is something to do with the, um, uh, the chosen ones, right? Even though God wouldn't have a chosen ones, but the, you know this particular genetic something to do with that, and you know the bit of the Bible where the fallen angels come and there's a war, and the bit of Enoch where some go out to do something wicked, and I think they, you know, they want God to go. They probably don't see it as God; they just see it as some advanced beings that. Um, you know, probably quite envious of them, in a sense, you know, if you're getting in a bad mind, and whatever. And this may have coincided with the mini ice age, maybe, I don't know. But, I think that's when they go. And where they go? Probably, well, maybe Mars, maybe the far side of the moon. I think they're quite possibly still there watching us. I don't know. I don't know for sure. But it's possible, right? Crop circles and we've seen moon bases and stuff like that, but can't know for sure. Just have to think it's possible. But anyway. And then, so once they've gone, humans are alone. And what happens? Well, we try. We try our best. Uh, you know, the Egyptians, the... Uh, I mean, the, the Greeks. You know, we... Gradually trying to find the the best way. Everyone wants the best for their kids and their families, so they, you know, especially once you have kids, you do start to think about that, perhaps before, you know, in your teens and your twenties, you, you just really, you know, get in a whirlwind. But, um, so we try. Civilization. But if we come to the present, we kind of see that um, we fail. <laughs> we fail without God. You know, we still need God's guidance for quite a while to come yet. Yeah. God is our teacher. So we've had, you know, several thousand years of having it our way. And we were given the earth, it was part of God's plan, you know. In a sense, God knew we'd want to try before we could. You know, you try and walk before you can actually walk, right? Um... 
but there has to come a time when we recognise that uh, we've fallen over and we may, you know, need some help getting back up to have another go. So this is the present. On the news yesterday, I think they were saying that the 50% uh, of the world's animals have been wiped out in the last, it wasn't very long, 30 or 40 years or something, or 100 years or something. Um, think about it. We make those animals extinct. You know, they, we used to, we had lives as those animals. We don't, you know, we don't want to cause their extinction, do we? Um, and I think if we hurt the planet too much, it's going to hurt us back. And uh, if we come to have too much dependence on, on uh, chemicals and stuff, that's going to hurt our own, our own bodies. Like, so we're not going to have the ability to live on Earth and stuff. Uh, I'll just mention it now, otherwise I forget. People have left the the religion. People are leaving religion, or they have been leaving religion. You know, the the Bible or whatever. That religious God that's written down, and they've gone to uh, science and, in a sense, worship science. Now, science is fine, but we, we, you know, we're reliant on a lot of people just, yeah, the world's got problems, there'll be someone in a white coat who will invent something and save the prob save the world. Um, but that's not happening. And if we look at what the scientists are doing, CERN and everything else, and weather modification, and fracking, right? You know, this is, they're, they're just continuing to uh, uh, ruin the planet. And they're hoping for an accident, because that's how most major science developments have happened. There's been an accident. And, um, and they've, and they've, they've come up with something you know so they're waiting for another accident to happen they're waiting for the big accident <laughs> to solve the world I mean uh, computers I don't think we invented computers the the story is is that there was a code breaking machine in Bletchley you know it's all like uh, switches and things like that to break codes, right? So maybe that was done. But I think it's part of the story. <coughs> I think one of God's helpers, let's say the, the ones that were here before, after we, the Americans dropped a nuclear bomb, I think that's when they, well, and it's supposedly this is when it happened, 1950, Eisenhower got a visit from a UFO. The alien came out of the spacecraft, just one, put some sort of peace, just like waved the hand, and everyone felt really peaceful. <laughs> and then he had a chat. And I, that chat, I'd love to know what was said, but probably something along these lines is that, um, you know, something to do with the nuclear bomb, you know. Don't do that again or whatever. Second thing is, the Earth is yours, but the other planets are not. So you won't be taking things from those other planets. And then in return, what they would have wanted something from the aliens, some bit of technology, we got the computer. The x86 architecture supposedly invented by
by IBM is still the same architecture that motherboards and everything have them in them today. It's the way that the processor communicates with the RAM, it's, it's, it's all of that, right? It can't have been an accident. Someone just comes up with this massive sort of diagram of a, of a computer and, uh, and then actually it bloody works. You know, and everything is still based on that same architecture today. And they're trying to invent quantum computers because they think there's infinite number of parallel universes that are just there for us to draw energy from. I mean, gosh, how arrogant is that? So uh, it's not going to work. Um, so, yeah, so I feel that like that's like they. That's where we got the computer from. And uh, if you think it's been a very interesting uh, inclusion into um, into our world, uh, quite you know amazing. Now the, the information is everywhere. You know, it's like the predictions of the revelations are coming true, or whatever. Well, not just the revelations, but the uh, so the um, the information will increase, or something like that. Anyway. But it's good that we can get information now, you know, anyone with a computer can go online and learn about something they're interested in. It's very good. Right, so, but, the problem with, uh, problem with the Earth today is, you know, it's run by governments who are kind of dictated to by big business. <laughs> And it's all it's about economy, it's about money, it's about growth, you know. And we should realise that, you know, we can only grow so much. Um, because developing countries are using their population as an easy way to achieve their growth. You know, so have lots of babies and, and our country gets growth, that's, that's good. The... In, the IMF, International Monetary Fund, like that, so loans will be cheaper, you know. It's going to fail. It's undoubtedly going to fail. It's on the brink right now, so, you know, there's some advanced warning. I never know, maybe there will be an accident. <laughs> And a scientist will go, boo, and invent this, and then we'll all be happy. I mean, clean energy is very good. Right, so, so, you know, I think I've recovered the present. Oh, yeah, something, oh, sorry, something I forgot from the past. Um... So I always had in my mind there'd be a, you know, we got the Bible, right? So grown up, Bible, yeah, read the Bible because it is the oldest piece of writing on the earth, at least that I knew about. But we've also got the Bhagavad Gita and there's so many Hindu stories and they're full of wisdom, I'm sure. And Chinese stuff and uh, that's probably the oldest. But I just had this feeling that there would be a lost book. There'd be there'd be something that was really knowledgeable and really good. And uh, yeah, so I thought it was the Book of Enoch because it came out. But um, I've read it a few times, and um, well, I haven't. I've listened to it. Mm -hmm. Not quite the same as reading. And I don't think that was the book. Like, most of it's so confusing. And I'm sure there's good stuff in there, but... There's also quite a lot of boring stuff in there. And I think... Like with the Bible, there's lies. Or shall we say... There's things which have been misinterpreted. Um, and probably mistranslated. But... 
There is another book, and it's been out for a while, and I listened to it probably about, uh, I don't know, five, six years ago. This is the Book of Thoth. And the Book of Thoth isn't really called the Book of Thoth. It's the Emerald Tablets. And, um, and I guess the issue is with this is, um, you know, the, there's, there's not many people who've translated them, it seems. There's only one or two. Uh, but if you listen to them, they are advanced. Um, and I think there's probably a few little things there that have been misinterpreted, but, um, you know, and it's amazing, they're written on bloody emerald tablets. You know, these things are written to absolutely last. And when I was listening to it again recently, so I'd forgotten, I'd almost forgotten most of it, or, but I, when I was hearing it again, I could remember some things. And uh, there's, it's supposed to be 13, it says at the beginning, this is a bit weird, it says at the beginning of this video this guy who's translated it said there were 13 of them yet the um, uh, the powers that be have taken away will just not let us hear what's said on two of them but when you listen to the re the whole video there's 16 <laughs> they're all read out so I'm not quite sure what's going on with that but I do feel like that is the loss, but I, when I'm hearing it, it's almost almost like God speaking at times. And I, I feel like uh, the writer, the physical writer, would have been one of God's helpers. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, I just wanted to stick that in there. So uh, that was a bit of the past, sorry. Past, present, future. Okay, so... I mean, I've had an idea of what I'd like the future to be like. And it's all been very much, um, sounds like going back to being a caveman. And, you know, people have said to me before, you know, we can't go back. We can't go back to, you know, can't go backwards. We mustn't go backwards. And it's right, we mustn't. It's wrong to go backwards. But the future isn't going to be about how we, necessarily how we get our food and what sort of building we live in and um, technology that we interface physically. It's all going to be about um, the soul and, you know, starting to experience your full self in a sense, while you're in a being, whilst in a being. Because our, our experiences so far has come from being in some sort of being. And those beings have, have been advancing, so too is the being now advancing. Um, something I've noticed is, is it seems that people like black people do seem to have a better ability at feeling the soul so I'm a white person I've got a different genealogy and so it's quite possible that their physical being is is more cap has been more capable of feeling the soul and that the work I've been doing meditating and stuff like that is changing my physical body to have more ability to feel the soul. So, I'd like to, you know, if I had a patch of land, a couple of acres, right, let everything grow natural, um, you know, get food somehow, right, God will provide. If maybe I have to fish, or maybe I have to, um, you know, eat the odd animal and have a tree with nuts and a tree with fruit. 
and uh, you know find stuff and and live in make my own house with uh, with sticks and twigs um sort of be like a be like a TP kind of shape wigwam sort of shape so sort of get you know have a have a outer little sort of fence you could weave twigs like that and then have poles going up and then um, weave twigs around them and then thatch thatch with long grass and you could have a fire in there because the the shape of the conical building and the the thatch of the smoke will just go out the top um, you know and be spending basically all my time outside during the day and you know and then come in at night and but I wouldn't be doing that like they were doing that a few thousand years ago well maybe they were quite advanced well they were, I mean I'll talk about the Celts in a minute um, but we'd be we'd be doing it fully aware of our soul our eternal being and and um, each day would bring you know whatever days bring any time you know things to learn and so on love learn grow play <clears throat> I don't want to talk about the Celts do I suppose it came into my head I mean the Celts you know they sound pretty good uh, except you know the human sacrifice thing <laughs> but even these people who who were being sacrificed were 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 probably really happy about it. It was probably a great honor you know when you've got that belief yeah, you'll you'll happily do it so but belief we we will be much more in tune with the truth, so the future will be on a you know, just looking down on it from a physical point of view, I think will be caveman like. You know, will be burning wood for warmth. I think that. But if we were in a community, a community of people, you know, they were these evolved, in a sense, my physical beings would be evolved, but it'd be more on the inside that it's evolved. We wouldn't necessarily see much signs of it on the outside, perhaps. Yeah. So that's that. That is the future. And yes, we will be able to travel the stars. There, there will be a way. Um, but we're not, I don't, you know, it's God's plan, right? It's God's plan. God's known all of us for four billion years, right? That's how well God knows you, you know? Damn sight. And it's not just based on this life. God knows all your lives. So don't be quick to judge yourself just because things have happened in this particular life. It's God's plan. God's been meticulously doing everything right gonna be awesome and I do feel like you know <laughs> I don't know I just it's good just to live each day you know some days I'm like is, is it can it happen I, you know I'm in to sort of doubt a bit and then other days I'm like, it's coming it's coming it's still coming <laughs> All right so yeah. So yeah, that thought really helped me when I thought after thinking I've been four billion years and thinking how well God knows me, the soul. God knows me so well. You know, and I should learn to. Be, I am <laughs> learning to know myself. <coughs> Right. Well, we're all part of the one, but we've all got an eternal life to lead. And that can be very grateful to that.
and thankful to our mother and father who uh, who actually this morning I kind of got an insight because I was thinking you know, I was about 10 billion years ago or whatever when God was in a sense in a situation like we are our mother and father was you know 10 billion years ago you know in this point of nearly there in a sense nearly to that awareness and let's say we got to fix the planet right until we fix the planet we can't say we're there um and i got a little insight into you know the in a sense yes god had that hard time then and now 10 billion years later god knows what it's like for every single one of us if our mother and father God has got a hundred billion children, that's, you know, that's, that must be quite hard on God in a sense. It must probably, you know, difficult. It's not like we're ever going to just be done with all our problems, is it? There's always going to be a challenge, always going to be a step, even in 10 billion years time. That's what we are. And... I've, the way I've come to this truth is that there, there is no other possibility. So one thing, I've felt the truth of things. Second thing, as I've analysed every other possibility that there could be. And none of them stand up. We are certainly not just flesh and bones. Absolutely not. There's no way we would... Um, you know, just flukily evolve into a being that could think and have awareness and then be dead and gone. It's not. It's created. It's designed. We didn't design it. A mother and father did. We are going to. You are a god because you're the god of your universe. And you're going to have more and more awareness of that. Anyway. I don't mean to, like, have a go at you. <laughs> we're all, you know, we're all in the same boat here. And, um... So, yeah, I'll send out love to all of you three. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Ciao for now.